Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever episode of Lewis Bloor's Game Changers. My first guest I've worked with previously doing body composition and nutrition plans. He's currently looking after some elite level athletes, including boxers who have world championship fights this year. And he's the owner of the Pro Nutrition Clinic. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul O'Neill. Right, Paul, welcome to the show. Thanks, Lewis, thanks for having me. Lewis Bloor's Game Changers. I like it, good my, name. My very first guest. It's a pleasure. How, uh, how's your heart rate? Yeah, it's good. I mean, this is this is a new experience for me, so I'm good. I'm honoured that you've asked me to be on as your first guest. I mean, we, we've met before, not caught up for a, for a little while, so it's good to catch up, see what you've been up to as well. Mm. So we've been working on this for, a f well, some time, four or five months now, um, and I've actually visualised, like, speaking to guests and, like, trying to talk at a point where you are just completely normal and you're just getting the information out. So where it is really the very, very first show... Um, I'm obviously going to have a few nerves, but the reason I've picked you is because it's January, it's the start of a new year. As a nutrition expert, I know for a fact that if people do tune in and they're listening to this podcast, they're going to take absolute gems of wisdom out about diet, how they can get themselves detox after Christmas and New Year, um, and just generally make the right steps. Like before training and stuff, nutrition does come first, right? Without a doubt, yeah. And this, this, this is my worst time of year. I mean, as you know, I work with a lot of professional boxers. Every fighter I work with comes back from the Christmas, you know, two or three kilos overweight. It's, it's just the worst time. So now is a perfect time to talk about nutrition. You know, everyone's got their New Year's resolutions, although I'm not a big fan of, of New Year's resolutions. So now is perfect time to talk nutrition. That's exactly right. So detoxing, what is it you do with your boxers? How is it you get them from... The, the glutton from Christmas, maybe a bit too much, or definitely a bit too much food, maybe a little bit too much drink, you know, lacking on sleep and stuff. Yeah. What are the first steps you take to get them clean and their bodies back running properly? Well, you know, you know I mean, we've, we've worked together before, so, I mean, you know, one of my philosophy is, is just all a real, real food-based diet. So the, the first thing back for every fight, and not necessarily just from Christmas, you know, with, with boxers in particular, they go through this stage of they're in camp, their diet's spot on, um, and then they're out of camp. And you know, you know, where, where where fighters have been eight to twelve weeks in camp, diet's been really strict, training's been really hard. You know, they blow out, and, wh and why shouldn't they? You know, it's a grueling, it's a grueling twelve weeks for most of them. So getting back, we just get straight back to the real foods. Uh, you know, majority plant-based plant-based foods, um, and it's just getting rid of all of that all of that process crap really mm. so so you mentioned plant-based foods there's a massive massive trend with veganism um you know I've, i saw on tv literally last night that there's a plant-based whopper yeah out now which actually at the bottom of the screen says what does it say it says because there's shared cooking equipment it's not actually suitable for vegetarians yeah so you believe that a boxer absolutely 100 percent. there's no question of a doubt they can fuel themselves they get enough fats carbs protein from a plant-based diet if done properly um, you, what what you're going to find is there's the majority uh, of uh, of top nutritionists out there are going to agree on the fact that your plate should be should be uh, the majority of that plate should be a plant based plant based approach. But you know, from my point of view, I, I go from an om omnivore style. So plant based is good. Majority of that food should be from come from a plant based. But getting you getting good quality meats in there is, is essential mm. as well. So I find that the the best thing about the you know getting things like spinach and broccoli, in which I absolutely love, is that they will they will cl they clean your blood like they have is uh, you know and I might be butchering this, but is it right in saying that when you have free radicals, is that is that that's the bad stuff that floats around your in your blood if you've been out if you've been drinking smoking that kind of stuff, whereas beetroot, broccoli, spinach that mops it all up, and I suppose if you've been kind of hitting it a bit too hard over Christmas and New Year getting those greens in that's going to literally clean your blood up is that is that right to say without a doubt yeah yeah so what happens with with um free radicals is that you get everything we do for, from the minute you know we wake up we start breathing air all of that creates these free radicals in in our in our bloodstream in, in our in our whole body now those those free radicals they're they're kind of like, like dysfunctioning cells, if you like. Now, right. they float around in your body and they attack all of your good cells. So it's like pollution in your blood almost, right? Exactly, yeah. So what you do is is all of your, you know, you, you know when you, you hear people talk about eat a, 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 a big variety of coloured foods, fruits and vegetables, once you get those into your diets, they're packed with antioxidants. And it's the antioxidants that get into your bloodstream and they, they kind of, they're your... Um, 
you kind of bounce as if you like they look after your good cells mm. so they d d destroy the, the free radicals and yeah you know you, you, it, it's not a, it's not a cleanse and it, it's just um it's kind of a, a part of your biology that's how, how it works you know your, your antioxidants attack the free radicals and you're, you're good to go i suppose your body will clean it up in time does it that will just speed up the process in a way make you do it a bit more fish efficiently yeah so so what you find if if you're constantly eating a bad diet you're constantly smoking that 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 consistent bad lifestyle mm. creates more and more free radicals and then they they in turn they 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 tear down your immune system so badly you end up you know poorly sore throats sniffles mm. all that kind of stuff so i've been quite on form with my diet recently um I feel like one thing I've really started to pay attention uh, attention to in the past 12 months is um, prebiotics, yeah. making sure that you're getting, and I think that's a, there's a massive boom in the market about that, um, prebiotics and probiotics. And I think it's a lot simpler than people think. Like people are out there buying these kind of crazy drinks and, you know, expensive stuff where i mean in my fridge i've got sauerkraut like i know yeah. it's, i know a lot of people don't like it i don't i don't particularly think it's the best but i've really noticed it when i eat it like you do you do feel your digestion working better um so is that something you incorporate into into your boxers diets as well you make oh, sure without a doubt the, you know we're seeing a, a massive explosion in the science now that is linking gut health to overall health mm. they're finding that you've got as many kind of neurotransmitters in your gut as you have in your brain so it kind of now starts to lead itself to the fact that all of these these sayings you know we've got growing up go with your gut instinct yeah. you know go with your gut why would you link your gut to your head and mm. this is why we're seeing now that gut gut health is becoming a major part of of health general health yeah. um and you're right um prebiotics are, all, uh, are fantastic for that so so what's the difference break down the difference between a prebiotic and a, and a probiotic to me what, what is how, how do they affect you differently so a, a prebiotic is um probiotic you you take so that there you're it's um it's bacteria in your gut effectively mm. so so probiotics you take and you're putting you're putting bacteria into your gut the bacteria is already formed like it's just you yeah. put it in it starts doing its job straight away yeah and, and prebiotics are your, is something you take that actually feeds the bacteria in your gut mm. um and and you know that bacteria in there is is kind of the source of life when we're in, if you imagine when you you when you're developing in the womb that is the first part that's developing. You st you start with all of that bacteria in, in your gut, yeah. and then you oh really that person grows. So that's the first that. as your as your your building blocks start from there and everything. So it really from that is bacteria, yeah, it really yeah. is your gut, isn't it? Um, well, I I just try and have like an apple and a banana every morning. I know they're prebiotics, but you'd think like you're kind of spun into thinking that the the the, the packaged scientific stuff that's marketed is more powerful than that. But if you have an apple and a banana, that's that's prebiotics, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, any it, all of those kind of high fiber foods are all all good for mm. for for prebiotics. Um, like you say, if you if you eat uh, your, your fruits and vegetables. And then once you get into your fermented foods, you're talking a different level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're well, that's something I've noticed as well. And it's something that people, I mean, sauerkraut is a, it's a weird flavor. It's quite acidic, but it does the business. You yeah. really feel, if you've got, you know, something that you feel is not digesting in your stomach, you do that, you soon know about it. But yeah, um, yeah. so pre, prebiotics and probiotics and the whole microbiome is something that's massively in the market now. But when did me and you first do that DNA test? Must have been, what, four or five years ago? It's got to be, yeah. And you, one of the first things you told me was to cut out carbs for a week when you want to start really getting on it. Um, and the, that nut mix, right? Yeah. Which has got the, is it, is it Q10, COQ10? Yeah, the Q10 and that, enzyme. Is, that, is yeah. that a probiotic? What, what is that? Yeah, I mean, that mix that, that, you know, the mix that we use. Still buy it today? That's, yeah, that's got, that's got the prebiotics in it. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. So, um, so what's going on at the moment? What's new? No, a lot. Just, uh, just doubling down with the fighters at the minute. Um, just come from a busy December, um, and now we're getting ready for everyone out, out again in March. You got you got some uh, championships going on this year, championship fights. Yeah, yeah, we've got um, we've got Hamza Shiraz. He's a he's a, a six foot three. We get him down to eleven stone. Wow. He's just won the uh, the WBO European Championship. Nice. So he'll be defending that. We've got. Um, When's that? When's he doing that? Um, I, I think he's looking at, it's not, not confirmed yet, but I would imagine it's going to be around April time. Mm. Um, and the same with Archie Sharp, super featherweight WBO. Archie Sharp, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, um, 
I've got him on Instagram actually. Really yeah. nice guy, and he does a lot for. Uh, he advocates kind of mental health, mental health and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, he seems like a really nice guy, you know. Yeah, um, good fella. But he's. Uh, I watched his last fight, and he. he, he don't. Oh, oh no, his, his last fight. He, it, it was tough for him. The fight before is the one that I watched. Yeah. Um, and he clipped the guy. He done well. Yeah, yeah. How do you reckon he's gonna get on this year? He's got a few few things lined up. Yeah, he's got he's got a big year. So he's pushing for obviously for well doneers. I think he's up to five or six in the world rankings now with the WBO. So. He's looking for those, you know, big fights with the top guys. You know, Jamel Herring's up there, nice. um, champion. Yeah. Looks like he's going to be fighting Cole Frampton soon, um, and then hopefully Archie can get the winner of those. That's it. So, yeah. so you, are you? Do you stick with these guys throughout their whole camp, or are you writing them their nutrition plans, and then you come and check up on them a few weeks later, or, or, or is it testing throughout constantly? Yeah. So with me, I'm I'm kind of uh, all or nothing. Um, I struggle to do, you know, just have a meal plan and me step away. So I'm there from the start of camp. So from 12 weeks out, I'm there from the beginning. We start the meal plans early. Um, we do some testing through camp as well. I do some um, metabolic testing with a VO2 mask. So we do resting metabolic rate. Yep. We do the VO2 max test and that kind of stuff. So we see where we see where their physiology is through camp, what we need to improve on and that kind of stuff. Mm. So what about, how do you actually, f you know, if you was to turn up to someone, brand new, brand new customer, boxer or a normal person, what's the first thing? Are you testing for intolerances first of all? Yeah, so it all depends what, what tests we do. You know, we done, we, me and you done the DNA test, yep. which is one of my favorite tests. It gives us a, it gives us a blueprint for your body. So we know exactly genetically how your body's gonna respond to, to diet and exercise. That's a lovely blueprint. So to start break from. that break that down because that's such an interesting thing that people people go throughout such a long period of their life, and by the time they get a little bit further in life, they might have earned the money where they can afford to start spending money on their body. Um, all of these things will become apparent: macros, DNA testing, intolerances. Yeah. You know, genetically, what your body is better at absorbing and turning into energy and using, and what things you should kind of avoid. For me that's something I'm only really just starting to focus on now. Yeah. And I've ballooned in size over the years and, and been super skinny and, and it's, it's been a real journey, but I'm, I'm, st I'm starting to learn about my intolerances now. Yeah. So, um, so break down the DNA test a little bit. What are the kind of markers you look for when you are analyzing someone to know what direction you should point them in? Yeah. So, so the DNA test is a 67, 60 second saliva test. So it's, it's essentially like a cotton wool bud. We swish around the inside of your mouth for a minute. And then the results from that, it, it gives us, it's, it's actually a move that when me, when me and you done it, it we, we had kind of two areas we looked at, which was diet and exercise. Yep. We've now actually got a lifestyle plug on that we've, we've got there as well. So I partnered with DNA Fit, who are kind of the market leader in, in lifestyle genetics. Um, and on the diet side, we can tell things like if you, how you respond to carbohydrates, how you respond to fats, if you've got the enzymes to digest lactose still, if you've got a predisposition to uh, celiac disease, mm. if you've got most celiac is obviously gluten, right? That's if yeah. So celiac disease is w is when you know your 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 gut struggles to deal with the the protein gluten, right? Um, that perforates your gut, and we get that leaky gut or uh, or celiac disease, as yeah. it's called. So I've definitely realised that my my intolerances are gluten and dairy, and I feel like it's something that over the years I just had no idea. I just yeah. didn't have any idea, and I would always struggle. But as soon as I switched to, and I don't know whether it's because I'm, I've got part Dutch blood, so I don't know if I'm like some kind of European yeah. Viking where we were roaming the plains just eating animals and animal fats. But as soon as I as soon as I start just going to meat, greens, and fats, yeah. I I drop straight down. Um, I've been kind of big and bulky before, but I've never, when I'm in that stage, I, I, I feel puffed out. And um, it's weird, man. It's weird. Like I've tried so many different diets in the past and it's like, I've, uh, does your DNA change over time? Is it something that you could do a test, say seven years ago, and then you come back and do it like today and it would things would change over that over that period or is it it's always completely the same no your dna is set so from the from the from the you know the day you're born to the day you die your dna mm. your dna is set it's, Cause, it's yeah because don't you get like you, you, i think you can go in and out of allergies in and out of having allergic reactions to things so that's yeah. why i thought you might sometimes be you know have a stronger um process for digesting things that other times you might you might struggle with is yeah that, is that right so you've got effectively you've got a dna blueprint which is the the, the dna that you're born with and mm. then 
what what we're you know which is quite a new science at the minute but what we're seeing there is is a thing called epigenetics so it's kind of the it's kind of the layer that lays over the top of your genes and your lifestyle choices is what determines how those genes are going to react right. so it will epigenetics will kind of down regulate or up regulate certain genes as you go throughout your life so mm. it, you know, constantly eating bad foods down regulates one gene up regulates another gene so it's not that it's not that your dna has changed it's just that your epigenetics over the top of that has started to dictate which genes are going to work and which genes are not so mm. so what are the main factors you can do to at the beginning of the year what are the what are the main things that you need to be on top of i'd say what sleep is obviously one of the because i think especially for me this is something i always did as a young man growing up living in london you're out partying all the time all, yeah yeah Paul, I'd go to the gym, I'd work out, I'd eat the right foods, I'd take all the supplements, and you, you'd never get to where you really want to be. Um, when you just start to get enough sleep, and you're eating, you might be eating less calories, but getting the right foods in you that, that suit your system, yeah. you just, it, it's not even how you look, it's how you feel. You know, so sleep has got to be, would you say that's right? Like sleep has got to be the number one thing, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, no, no pun intended, but it's a game changer. Hey. It, 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 really, <laughs> it really is. Um, you can do all of. You can put all the work in in the gym. You can have your diet on point, and you can destroy it so easily with just five hours of sleep a night. Mm. You've got to constantly be having regular, good quality sleep. Is there sleep tests for people to? Is that is that the next guest? Um, is is that is that sleep tests like for you, you you know you can find out how long your body actually needs for your system or yeah I mean you can you know obviously there's there are sleep clinics you can go to get wired up and you can see exactly what's happening you know especially with your brain during during sleep but you know the majority of us we need between seven hours minimum seven to nine hours mm. for, for all of us see I, I I'm quite good with my sleep you know maybe not years gone by but now I'm quite good with my sleep but then I find myself some days, like where I was just out in Thailand and I, I was out there on my own and, and just had time to do as I pleased. Yeah. Um, I was out there doing Muay Thai and some days I'd get up and I'd have all the energy in the world and other days I would just need to sleep. But yeah. where I wasn't pressuring myself, living in London, it's, you, you force yourself to, you've got to get up, you've got to be doing things all the time. Whereas out there, the days I, I needed to sleep, I just slept, Paul. Um, my heart rate, I, I usually wear a Fitbit. My heart rate's usually 59 to 57, which I think is okay considering I, you know, when I go out, I drink, I smoke, whatever, I have a good time. Yeah. But I am quite on my health. When I got back, my heart rate was like 49, 50. Yeah. And that was from like 10 days, vitamin D, getting enough sleep. It, I wasn't eating any carbohydrates. I was just going to this um, vegan cafe. I wasn't eating, I wasn't, I was eating meat. But, um, but yeah, and it, uh, you know, it was something that, that, I've never really cl like clicked that much how important getting that sleep. Like if your body needs 12 hours sleep, give it that 12. If, if you're in sleep deficit and you're getting six hours of sleep for a week, yeah, you need to catch that sleep up, sleep up at the weekend. Yeah. Um, and that is something that I've found very important. And as you mentioned, a bit of a game changer. Um, hydration for boxers is one thing I want to talk about. Some, yeah. some of the key points that I think people do miss out on without getting too scientific and too, too technical is if you're training really hard, you need to rehydrate your body. You need to get the electrolytes in that you need. When I was out in Thailand, the first day I got there, I got there Christmas Eve night, woke up the next day, two hours Muay Thai training. Yeah. I was so wiped out, literally crashed me out, slept all through to the next day. And then even when you're just kind of standing up, walking around, you're still sweating. I was then yeah. getting on the treadmill and doing the 90 minute walk, even on my rest days, because I felt like I wanted to do something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I went to the, this cafe, I was going to this vegan cafe every day and they had an electrolyte drink, which kind of tasted like Lucozade, but it wasn't, I'm sure it wasn't anyway, yeah. unless they charged me like 3,000 <laughs> baht for it, it was just a Lucozade or whatever. But what's a good way to naturally get electrolytes in and, and a way to rehydrate to, to, a, to a professional level? Yeah, so electrolytes is massively important, especially if you're, if you're training heavy. Mm. Um, uh, and when we talk about electrolytes, the two main electrolytes we're talking about is sodium and, and potassium. Now you can get the off the count, you can get off the shelf electrolytes, which are really good. I use them with the boxers. Um, and there's this: you're supposed to drink to first. But it, it's a it's a real hard thing to try and describe to someone, and people like to walk away with a number: how mm. many liters should mm. I be hitting a day? So I say to the fighters. Minimum of three liters, anywhere up to eight. So between three and eight liters a day. And some, some of them are like, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. You know, I can't get nowhere near that. 
And you know, it, it's a problem. But especially they're, but they're sweating it out as well during yeah, their yeah. training and the salts as well. Exactly. The salt the salts the salts are massive. So like I say, you can do you can do the off the counter electrolytes, which are really good. I use the the science in sport one. You know, I'm not mm. not plugging them, but it's the it's the brand that plug I go away, to. Man. Plug away, bro. Um, or you can you can go natural. So you don't want to go for the the Himalayan. You don't want to go for the the table, table salt. salt. You, you don't you want to go for the Himalayan the, the Himalayan rock salt. Mm. That's got the uh, it's got the balance of sodium and potassium and a whole host of other minerals in there that balance balance the mineral profile out in the salt and that's exactly what your body needs um so I, you can do that you can do a pinch of that with some some fresh lemons in the water that's a perfect electrolyte Kay. or you can go for the coconut water but that's quite sugary in it sugary um it's it, it's electrolyte profile is slightly off whack but it works but if you know you're training hard you can you can have one of those after no problem if you're waking up in the morning and just getting on the train and going to work and back into it and they're they're not going to be exactly, good for you yeah, yeah. um so i've written my mum's going to Bar uh, barbados in april decided she wants to lose some lose some weight and yeah. um and make sure that she's uh she's uh you know feeling trim and, and and feeling good about it so she's she started to um i've got her on a macro diet yeah um and it's it's less macros than she's used to eating and lots and lots of water but i think she said she's gone down she was 87 i think she's gone down 3.7 3.8 kg in the f in 10 days i said to her measure yourself every 10 days not every week because you'll really really get somewhere with it um but that's got, I've got a bit, where she started taking the water on board, there's got to be a lot of water weight. But when she first started doing it, the first three days, she was saying, I'm, I literally can't take this much water on board, even though it's like two, two and a half, three liters. Yeah. Because your body will get used to what you give it. If you're, if you're getting by on a pint of water a day, your body will adapt to that. Yeah. So then when you start, when you then go and drink a liter and a half, you will feel like that's way too much water. But then within three days, you're, you're going to snap into it and get the right food. So you know, I've, I've PT before and I've written people diet plans and I always say to them, get through the first three days, don't care how uncomfortable it is, stick at it, because this is the science, these are the numbers, this is the macros. Yeah. And as soon as as soon as soon you start using that fuel properly, if you don't give your body that in a day, you'll feel you'll feel like you need to do it, like appetite, water, hydration, that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, so that's cool, good chat so far. I wanted to move on to um, diet types and things that, are so, you know every week there's a new diet coming out which is all so convincing and it all sounds great um but wanted to speak to a professional and see see what the odds are so veganism talk to me about veganism this is one of the main things that people are talking about obviously you ha we had the movies out game changers there yeah. was there was a massive debate on joe rogan with this chris chris kesler i listened to the first one chris put forward a good argument for why veganism doesn't make sense for like agricultural reasons and things like that um, and then James Wilkes came on and, and pretty much smashed all of his arguments away. My girlfriend's vegan, um, and she's very healthy. Yeah. Um, I just love eating meat, though. So what's, yeah, yeah. what's the deal? Is, does it come down to individuals and what you should be eating, or is it a straight-up blanket, what all vegans want you to believe? If you're not vegan, then you're, you're not smart. That, yeah. You're not making you're the, the right devil. choices. Yeah, yeah. Right, this yeah, is yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Game Changers was massive. The movie The Game Changers was really big. I mean, it went, you know, that came out on Netflix... And I, I would say every single fighter that I look after phoned me, phoned me the next day watching it and said, you know, I, feel, I think I'm going to go vegan. Because mm. um, he's a beast, that James Wilkes yeah, as well. Yeah, he is. But I, I think if, 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 when, you, when you watch through the actual, you know, the documentary a few times, I, the point they're trying to make is a diet that is mostly plant-based is beneficial. Mm. And I think when you look across the top athletes in the world, and we, you know, we, even when you go to elite level, the, the facts are there that 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 is true but in terms of it being a hundred percent a vegan diet it, it's it's debatable because we you know th those it's it's more of an omnivore style so mm. like like i said at the start of the podcast your your plate should be majority of that should be plant-based yeah and the, the benefits you get from having those those animal sources it, you know, it's undeniable. You know, it, the, the, the results are there from the top, top top athletes in the world. They're all on. You know, I'm not saying that there isn't top athletes that are 100% that are vegan because there are. Yeah. But the but it's got to depend on the sport as well, surely. Yeah. What are these athletes actually doing? Which way are they exerting their body? Yeah. You know. But when when I say when I say, you know, going to um, you know animal animal based foods, it's the quality of those foods that you've got to pay attention to. So. You know, your eggs need to be all organic, free-range chicken eggs, mm. or 
or the like, or you know, your meat needs to be um, outdoor bred, come from out outdoor bred cattle. Yeah. All of those, you know, farm raised animals that they're just no good because that concept of you are what you eat is it, it is true, but it goes one step further. You know, you are what your food eats yeah, as well. Yeah. So if your if if your animals that you're eating are being force fed, you know, grains and corn and that kind of stuff. The, the lipid profile in, in their meat changes and that that is a reflection on once you once that's inside and you're you're digesting that you get those knock-on effects of as well i um i know for a fact that i need to and probably 90 percent of the people um you know in this country need to probably eat less bread and eat more greens 100 percent, because you're gonna you're gonna get you're going to get the benefits of that. You know, if the first thing you're eating in the morning is bacon and egg sandwich and you're doing that for, I mean, don't get me wrong, you do it once a week, once a month, you're going to be fine. If you're doing that three times a week over a two-year period, your body's going to have to deal with that, yeah. that tough oil. Um, I also agree about the profile of the meat. How's that How's that meat, you know, live? Does it have the nutrient profile? And, and is it going to be good for you? Um, one thing that I find really frustrating in this country is that we don't have the opportunity to go outdoors as much as you would in America, yeah. um, especially coming back from Thailand and just being able to just walk around and just you just head outdoors and you're just outdoors all day. And I would love the chance to be able to, you know, I'd, 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 the thing is, it's a difficult topic to talk about. I'd rather go out and catch my own meat, put it yeah. that way, that's been living a, a natural life and a, f and a free ranging life. Because if it's if it's living in the woods, living in the wilds, and, eat, and eating it, what it should be eating as nature intended, the nutrient content is going to be far superior to than what you can even buy, even if it's going to be a you know like a Waitrose Dutchy chicken breast or something like yeah. that. There's there's a limit to how nature intended, and I think any changes man puts on the animal is is probably for the worse Without of, of the nutrient profile. So I feel like I'm probably going to move to America later in life and. Hunt and fish. Maybe, like yeah. It. It's difficult. Make sure I'm going. I don't, I don't <laughs> want to start going into it on the first podcast, but the, the way that I would offset the fact of you're killing an animal is because you're doing it in a way... That, that animal has lived completely how it's lived. You, you're, you're taking that animal and you're going to survive on it for... you know if, if it's an elk, you know you have that for a whole year. So if you actually look at the numbers of shopping in Waitrose, you know, complete disconnection from um, getting your hands dirty... And going out, you know, the respect you would have, you know, the discipline you need to learn in order to do that. For me, I think that's a much more conscientious th decision than just ignoring it and just, you know, going to the meat counter, going to the fish counter in Waitrose. Yeah. Um, it's something I play with. It's something that, I, you know, I, I, I would like to think that I would have the discipline to go and do later in life. But that's a whole skill set you need to learn on your own, right? Right, that, yeah. So meat profile needs to be the right meat, needs to be the right eggs. But if you do it properly... Again, mainly plant-based diet, but there's definitely benefits to having meat in your diet. Right? Without a doubt. Mm. And, and like you say, you know, if, if you're fortunate enough that you can live in a country where you can, you, you know, you can hunt for your f for game. Well, you just have the wildlife there. Exactly, that you live in yeah. such a country where there is a bountiful nature scene almost, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. No, that's the, I mean, the trouble is we've, we've, we have become so dependent on a convenient lifestyle is we now walk into the supermarket and we pick up you know, a piece of steak from the shelf and we, we don't even look at the label. You know, it would be so much, we would be in such a better position if we would live how our grand, grand, grandparents lived. We walked into the butcher, we knew the butcher by name and said, you know, hello, Bob, what's the fresh meat in today? Where, where was it killed? You know, mm. what farms it come yeah, from? How was yeah. it, how was it raised? Just those conversations can dramatically change. I, your don't, sh I don't shop at butchers enough, you know. That's, no, I that's mean, none of, it, but none of us do. None of us do. We've we just like it easy, man. We exactly. like to know what we're getting. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to speak to the butcher these days. We want to just go in and buy it. Exactly. But we whip it off the shelf. We don't even look it's at crazy, the It's crazy, man. You know, it's crazy. It's, it's easy to have all these, uh, of these ideals, but I think when you break it down, we, we all love our comfort, don't we? We yeah. all like it to be as easy and it's just as as smooth as possible so all right then so top tips if someone's going out buying meat they're going to buy eggs what should they be looking for what should they be looking for on the label to make sure they're getting as good as they can in this country yeah so i mean eggs is a nice easy one you know it's all printed nicely clearly on the label you want to be going for your 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 organic free range chicken eggs clarence call every time baby exactly <laughs> i yeah. love them yeah. they're, the, they're the absolute best ones and then for your meat you know if you're just getting it off the shelf i mean Tesco's, um, Sainsbury's, they've all, they've all started to, to get better with their labeling now. You, you're looking for organic outdoor, outdoor bred cattle. You want the cattle to be 
graze in, in their natural environment. You want them to be eating bugs and grass and that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and the same with chickens. Chickens is a lot harder because the, the chicken industry is just, it, 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 it's huge in, you know, barn red, barn bred chickens. So it, the chicken industry has got a, a lot, a lot, a lot of catching up to do in as much as trying to get this, this kind of better quality meat. Um, and it's a shame because, you know, everyone loves, you know, chicken is, is off the scale. In I, terms think, of I think it. KFC have jumped on a vegan or vegetarian bloody oh, burger they? as well, man. Yeah. I, wonder what, I wonder what vegans actually go in or vegetarians actually go into those places and buy it. Because that has got to be like, they're, they're the biggest animal murderers on the planet. And <laughs> yeah. like, I'll tell you what, we whack one out for the vegans. You're still adding <laughs> yeah. to it. But guaranteed, like there's people people that, that would still do it. I suppose you've got to be in a bit of a bad place when you're doing that, like yeah. drunk on a night out. All right, take me KFC. Burger King and like, <laughs> oh, it just cracked me up how it says not suitable for vegetarians on the bottom. It's a plant based waffle. Yeah, like that, yeah. Honestly, that was rolling. I had to pause the TV and have a right giggle <laughs> last night. Um, cool. Very good points there. So let's let's fire through some more. Keto is something I've done before. Yep. White fish, greens, massive dose of, um, uh, is it iodine you get, which helps your metabolism from white fish? That's yep. something I lost so much weight. It was just before I was about to go on Tawi and I took two months off work. Um, and I was literally eating white fish and I ended up like gone. Like yeah. I, I must have lost, I think I was 17 stone. I think I lost three stone in two months. Like yeah. it was it was radical. Um, keto diet, best ways to go about it. Is it something that you'd recommend for people who are trying to get rid of fat? Yeah, yeah. I like I um I'm a fan of the keto diet and the biggest the biggest mistake that um people make with the keto diet is that they they just go from one extreme to the other. So they go from kind of this you know, 250, 300 gram, like carb grams mm. a day straight into a keto diet and they get a week in and they're just completely gone. You know, they're, they've they got no energy. They can't, they can't lift their head off the pillar. It's because they've gone from one extreme to the other. And it's not, it's not a diet that lends itself well to that. You need to build up a real ro robust um, metabolic flexibility to be able to do that. So you want to start reducing your carbs over time, get your body adapt at burning fat as a fuel, and then once you're in there and you're down to kind of you know, a ballpark for, let's say a ballpark for most people, uh, maybe 100, 120 grams of carbs a day. Once you're comfortable with that and you, you're still, you know, you can still train, you're energetic around that number, then start looking at the at the keto diet. But for going from one extreme straight into it is a is real hard for most so people. So with the keto, are you completely cutting out carbs? Because it's not just the carbs you get from like bread or or potatoes, sweet potatoes. You are you are taking on carbs if you're eating broccoli, beet, yep. beetroot, things like that. So how how would you navigate the offset of carbs, but still try and get the nutrients in from the vegetables as well? Are you are you allowed carbs during a keto diet, even a small amount? Yeah, yeah, cool. So you you um you know there's these numbers that float around in 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 the kind of keto diet around you know 25, 30 grams of carbs a day. I mean, if you was to have you know kind of one apple and a, and a half a plate full of veg. That's going to be a that's going to be a 30, 30 grams done. Mm. So um, you definitely want to be taking on plenty of vegetables. Generally, all vegetables are grown grown above ground. Are your are your kind of keto go to? Once you start getting into the carrots, the beetroots, all your root vegetables, they're really high in carbs. So you would generally stay away from them if you was if you was going up for a keto lifestyle. Mm. But the the the, the all, all of the greens and that kind of stuff, you're going to be Salt's another big one, isn't it? When you go onto the keto diet, I suppose that's got to do directly linked to electrolytes because when you're taking on carbs, your body is a bit more like a sponge, like you're constantly absorbing. You've got probably a lot of fiber in you as well. So you're holding that water and, and that salt in maybe a little bit more. And I suppose a lot of carbs that you'll make, potatoes, sweet potatoes, bread especially, has got quite a high salt content. Yeah. So when you switch straight over and you dramatically go, like one of the things that happens with my mum on this macro diet, she dropped her salt dramatically. Two yeah. days in, she got home from work. She went, if I, um, I've got a really, really bad headache. Is that normal? I said, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, obviously, you're, you're, you're coming off a huge amount of salt every day. You, you need to expect some withdrawals and some changes. So um, is that something that's common? Because I've heard of the keto flu. Yeah. But is that linked to salt or is that just linked to a comp or lack of salt or is that just linked to a change of diet and you're just not getting what you're used to? Yeah, so the, the keto flu is is the is the biolog biological change that you're going through as you're converting your kind of your your carb burning engine over to your fat burning engine that that switch isn't isn't easy especially if you've come from kind of a high moderate to high mm. carb diet 
Um, but what happens when you start dropping your carbs is your, you, the biological thing for your liver to do is, is to start to drop sodium. So it releases a lot more sodium out through your urine and that kind of stuff. Mm. So you, you do naturally drop salt. So adding salt in as you start to reduce your, reduce your carbs is a good thing. And again, go back to the Himalayan salt, get that. Get well, that on I your, have, on I have Himalayan, uh, Himalayan salt baths and they yeah. make you feel amazing. It's, and it's, uh, again, I might be butchering this. I want to try. This is the thing. I like to think that I know a lot of facts, but one of the things about this podcast is I'm going to get to test myself a lot. So am I right in saying that Himalayan salt has 82 minerals in it because it's the oldest, oldest salt supplier on the planet, the oldest mineral deposit on the planet, and we need or we need every single one of those minerals in our blood in order, f- is, is that right? Or am I yeah, completely I mean, butchering that? I don't know. I don't. I, would, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to guess. It, fa- I wouldn't like to, to get the number. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's but it's like got that. a huge amount of, of minerals mm. in it. And I mean, you, you talk about having the Himalayan salt in your bath. One of the things I do with, with the fighters is that um, over the course of camp, especially during fight week, I like to get a lot of Epsom salt baths in. Now, Epsom salt is um, it's loaded with magnesium. And the and the fastest way to absorb magnesium into your body is is through the skin. So soaking in an Epsom salt bath really absorbs that magnesium into your skin. And and, and we're seeing we're seeing actually magnesium deficiency is is really getting up there now with athletes. This is something yeah. I've read about. Which there's a professor he invented ZMAs. Is this right? Again, I'm pretty sure this is right. Professor from uh, American College was tasked with testing the football players to see what they're lacking in. And he came out, they're mostly lacking in zinc and magnesium after yeah. a hard day's training. So he mixed that with some B vitamins to help it all digest. And ZMAs are a huge, huge thing. So while we're on the topic of supplements, I range mine massively. Some days I'm on my vitamin D, especially in the UK because there's not enough sunlight. Um, the supplements I would take would be cod liver oil, vitamin D, a multivitamin, even though I've heard that you're better off just getting all your minerals from, from, your, uh, from your food as well. Um, and then in, in my like oats from like what you've told me, turmeric, cinnamon, all of that kind of stuff as well. Yeah. But w- again, on this whole topic of bouncing back after Christmas, after the new year, what are some supplements that are going to, you know, make sure your energy levels are quite high? Magnesium, I see, is obviously being one. Yeah. Um, but I would say with the magnesium, you know, don't go for a kind of a, an oil supplement. Go for the Epsom salt. So bath. the baths would be the baths most efficient is, way. Is the way wow. to go, yeah. Even yeah. even through ZMAs, even through that zinc magnesium mixture, is you definitely say the magnesium bath. Wow. The bath is better, yeah. What, why is that? Is it just a tough thing to digest through your system, or is it because it goes through your liver and your liver? Yeah, the the rate of absorption from the bath is a, is a lot higher than than you digesting it and it going through the going through the process of breaking down for your digestion and that kind of stuff. So what's the difference between if you have a Himalayan salt bath and an Epsom salt bath? I know you're a nutritionist. I've got you onto baths here somehow, yeah. but <laughs> it's all the same. So is there, is there a note? Are you aware of what the difference is between Himalayan salt and Epsom salts or is it? Yeah, so the, the Epsom salts has got a far higher magnesium content. That's the main the, thing, yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. nice, cool. But the other supplements, I'd say, um, you know, you, you can't be getting all of your, everything you need from real food. That's always the, always the go-to on on all. If you're if you're trying to increase one, you know, vitamin or mineral, look at real food first. But the the supplements we go for is uh, omega three and a, and a vitamin D. Like you say, especially in the UK, um, th- th- there's there's a huge amount of science coming out now that's showing that the vitamin D is 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 becoming massive in in you know on the health side. Aren't they incorporating it into a lot of even plain flour now. I think the government have had a push to say, look, we know for a fact that people in this country are 95% vitamin D deficient. Again, go like, I I always thought I had that sad thing, you know, um, seasonal affective disorder going through Christmas. I think everyone does. If you're living in the UK and you're going through from November all the way through to end of March, you're not getting enough sunlight. Unless you're, and it doesn't need to be sunny in order to do that, but you've got to be outdoors. Yeah. I work inside. Do you work inside? Yeah, all of us. We, we all work inside. All, yeah. So you're, there's no, and even if you do work outside, you're probably wrapped up in the winter, right? So that is such a big thing that I try and do. In my wash bag, I carry around for me all the time, take it to work. I've got my vitamin D tablets. Yeah. There's also drops as well. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Eggs, you get vitamin D from good eggs, yeah. I suppose, as well. 
So yeah, I feel like that's something I could definitely do as a as a quick hack just to make sure that I'm feeling a little bit better all the time is definitely the supplements. Yeah. But it's that's money that's worth spending on yourself that you're going to get the benefits out of long term. I just I just know what I'm like and I hope that this conversation helps people because we might all know this stuff but you always need a little reminder. And unless, I mean, I imagine you're pretty clockwork with your supplements and your diet and stuff, right? See, that's yeah, what yeah. I mean. I know it to be true. Um, but I'm on and off and I preach it and I know it, but I'm always, always on and off. So I feel like definitely investing in supplements is probably... Uh, well, I mean, we're all like that. I mean, I was the same over Christmas. I blew out just like everybody else. Yeah, but I saw know. on Instagram your blowouts. You had all <laughs> measured, <laughs> measured custard and cream and all that. I saw it. Yeah. It was a blowout for you. But, yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to get a DNA test done. So how do, how, how do you go about doing it? So it's just a, it's a 60 second, like we say, a 60 second swab test in the mouth. Um, that goes off to the lab. Right. The guys in the lab do all the... Right, all we'll get one done and we'll post it. We'll post it on the Instagram. We'll let everyone know how my results have come back. Yeah. Um, how much are they? How much do they cost? So the uh, the DNA test is £189 for the test. And in that you get kind of three, three sections we look at. We do diet, exercise, and then some lifestyle things. We can look at your your predisposition to how you deal with stress. If you're uh, if you're that morning lark or, or a night owl, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and you can start making some good lifestyle decisions off the back of those. You know th what you find out from from the test. Right. So, seeing as you are our first guest, we want our listeners to get a little bit of value out of this and take something Course, away. Yeah. So. 180 quid, right? Yeah. Can they have a discount? Of course, yeah. Have we got a yeah. code? Can we can we make a code? We'll give them a code, yeah. Like, uh, I don't know, whatever you like. Game Changers 10 Game or something. Game Changers 10? What, yeah. 10%? We'll give them 10% off, Job yeah. Job done, right. Yeah. I, think we'll, uh, I think we'll end it there. Thank you so much, Paul. Pleasure, man. Absolute legend. We'll get this test done and we'll post it on Instagram, yeah? Yeah, like it. Sick man.